DOD IG report, Wallace found mistakes, unknowing violations of regulations, poor judgment, but found no intentional deception and rendered his decision on each officer. General Wallace filed an official reprimand against Lieutenant General Kensinger for his deception and for the other failings in the discharge of his duties as the senior leader in the administrative chain of command for Tillman's 75th Ranger Regiment. After my review of Lieutenant General Kensinger's conduct and performance of his duties, I concluded further that General Kensinger compromised his duty to the Acting Secretary of the Army by providing a report including information he knew to be false, which was his own sworn testimony, undermining the principle of civilian control of the Army. Further, I concluded that he failed to provide proper leadership to the soldiers under his administrative control in the 75th Ranger Regiment. He let his soldiers down. I censured him for his conduct and referred him to an Army Grade Determination Review Board to determine the question of the highest grade in which he served satisfactorily for purposes of his retirement. To sum up my conclusion regarding Lieutenant General Kensinger, let me mix my service metaphors. For casualty notification, safety investigation, and administrative control of the 2nd Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment, General Kensinger was a captain of that ship, and his ship ran aground. It ran aground because he failed to do his duty. There were casualties, the credibility of the United States Army on a matter of almost sacred importance to Army and soldiers, a soldier's duty to a fallen comrade, and compounding of the unspeakable grief for the Tillman loved ones. Brigadier General Nixon and Colonel Bailey made mistakes, but they kept Lieutenant General Kensinger informed of the key facts regarding Corporal Tillman's death and the investigation. Nixon and Bailey were in Afghanistan conducting secret missions against a ruthless enemy. They were in the fight 24-7. They had every reason to expect that if they kept their leaders in their administrative chain of command informed, their leaders would do their duty, which included proper family notification and timely safety reviews. Lieutenant General Kensinger failed in his duty to his soldiers, and the results were a calamity for the Army that we continue to suffer from today. Had Lieutenant General Kensinger done his job, fulfilled his multiple duties as a senior leader in the administrative chain of command, we would not be here today, three years later attempting to correct the record and restore the credibility of the Army on this critical matter. For the nine other officers reviewed by General Wallace, I accepted his decisions with no further action. The, pre the press release provides further detail on Wallace's decisions. Let me summarize the matters that have been addressed and decided by the now seven investigations. One, Corporal Tillman was killed by friendly fire in a tragic accident, not by criminal misconduct. Two, there was no attempt by the Army or soldiers to cover up the manner of his death. In fact, the soldiers of his regiment initiated a friendly fire investigation the day after he was killed. Three, from the outset, the soldiers conducting the investigation intended to release the results to the family and to the public upon their completion of the investigation. And four, Pat Tillman fully deserved his silver star for his courageous actions on the day he died. In conclusion, let me speak for the Army and again offer our heartfelt condolences to the Tillman family. Our Army grieves the loss of every soldier Pat Tillman is one of over 3,000 soldiers who volunteered to defend our nation in this time of war and who gave their lives for our country. And his family, his mother, father, brothers, and wife will forever grieve his loss. Grief that was compounded by the failing of his army. We have a duty to all families of our fallen soldiers. To give them the truth, the best we know it, as fast as we can. We failed in that. For that, his army, and his comrades in arms are deeply sorry. Thank you, General Cody. I'd like to, if I could, withhold questions until General Cody finishes his remarks. Thanks. We'll get to the questions right after I have my statement. Um, Mr. Secretary, thank you. I don't have much to add to what Secretary Guerin has just outlined for you, except to reinforce that your Army holds itself accountable when mistakes are made. Our Army is a learning institution that constantly improves through lessons learned and absolutely cares for and has no greater priority than our soldiers and their families. This weekend, I visited the Joint Readiness Training Center at Fort Polk, Louisiana in Camp Shelby, Mississippi, where our troops are going through very tough training as they prepare to deploy to Iraq and Afghanistan. 
While there, our troops were interviewed by some of your colleagues. A young private first class from the Kentucky Army National Guard was asked what he most feared and most worried about. What weighed on him as he prepared to go to his first deployment into combat? The PFC looked around at the faces of his squad and answered what he worried about most was that one of his buddies wouldn't come home, that he would let someone down and lose a friend, a brother soldier. What that PFC voice is what every soldier who has been through the crucible of combat knows. To lose a friend in a fight is a gut-wrenching experience that changes you forever. To cause the death of another soldier is simply an unthinkable horror that you may never come to terms with. Corporal Pat Tillman's death like the death of thousands of his brothers and sisters in arms, is a personal and national loss. To lose a soldier, regardless of the circumstances, is a difficult consequence of this war that we must cope with as a soldier, as nation, and as an army. At a time when we were asking so much of our soldiers and of their families, essentially for our soldiers to be the shield between this nation and the terrorist who would see the United States defeated, we as an army must rely even more on our values, our integrity, our warrior ethos to remain strong for this nation. Because of these values and this warrior ethos, we all bear the weight of the mistakes and failures in leadership by those who wear this uniform. Such is the case in the aftermath of Corporal Tillman's loss, the untimely and inaccurate notification of his family and the mishandled investigations that followed. I cannot emphasize enough how disappointing it is both professionally and as a father of two soldiers personally that those who knew chose not to inform the Tillman family immediately that friendly fire was, inspect, was suspected and that we had ongoing investigations. We can never do with any investigation, report, or offer an apology that will ease the additional pain the Tillman family has had to bear because of our Army's failures. As an Army, we, hope we have held ourselves accountable. We've taken corrective action. We've instituted important changes. Through it all, we have drawn the strength and the sacrifices by those soldiers we have lost and the families that they have left behind. Our soldiers have continued with the mission and taken the fight to the enemy as their fallen comrades would have wanted them to. I spent this weekend with our great troops, talented young leaders, incredible non-commissioned officers, many of whom are preparing for their third combat tour, which will last for 15 months. I listened to their concerns, their determination, their incredible faith in one another, their faith in this Army, and their faith in the American people. I came away assured that we are still the finest Army in the world, made up the strongest generation that this, gen this nation has ever seen, a generation and an Army that includes Corporal Pat Tillman, who on April 22, 2004, while shielding this country, made the ultimate sacrifice. To his fellow soldiers who continue to serve today, I say, just as we share in what goes wrong, we should, with great pride, sharing the incredible discipline, determination, strength, and accomplishment of those who wear this uniform and continue to fight so hard with such incredible courage and strength to remain an unyielding shield to this great nation. With that, the Secretary and I will uh, take your questions. Richard. Secretary, can you give us an idea of the, that the range of punishment that you considered for General Kensinger? In other words, how did you settle on, on yes. this? Was there something more severe, mm -hmm. less severe? Is this in the middle? The decision I made was to censure him and to refer him to a grade determination board to determine which grade he served honorably in for purposes of his retirement. That board will make a recommendation to me on whether or not he is able to keep his, his third star. Uh, I did consider a range of punishments. I had uh, under my consideration streams that went from court-martial on one end to a memorandum of concern on the other end. Uh, as did, did General Wallace. General Wallace had the full range of, of punishment.